<laughs> okay, so um, I've got to remember I've been collecting since about 1974, so, um, and um, so, so if, if you had material off this plant, okay, this, if this was one <coughs> bit that had been collected to provide the, the um, fruits, then the f some small branches of this, for example that, uh, which I've just broken off, that, oh, uh, well you won't want to present that, I'm telling you. <laughs> but something like that could be part of a, a uh, specimen that includes uh, uh, freshly, fresh material that's been pressed and dried. Uh, and similarly with the buds. Uh, okay, sterile, um, best to avoid. Uh, okay, he, here we've got a fern with the base of the plant rhizome, which is good. Uh, it looks like it's fertile. Uh, and so that's actually looking like a a really good specimen. Notice there's still a bit of soil in the base of the plant. So you try and get as much of that off as you can at the time of collecting and sometimes, I mean, sometimes, you know, I'm collecting monocots most of the time and, and they're often from swamps and there's often clay soil around them and I've spent quite a bit of my life, um, I mean, it's quite good, you know, as a kid we used to build clay dams in the streets, uh, in the gutters, and I'm still doing it. I'm, not building the dam, so I'm still playing with clay and water as a, as a supposedly as a grown-up. So I'm washing that out as much as I can, if I've got that available, either with a hose, which is great, or uh, with a bucket of water. Uh, and sometimes I can't get it all out, and, and this this is the case here too. But this all of that soil can be removed before that's mounted. Uh, that will make for a cleaner specimen. Um, uh, if and it will uh, save a lot of uh, soiling, as it were, of the uh, herbarium sheet. And of course, if that specimen was a herbarium specimen that was passing international boundary borders, they don't want to see soil on specimens. It's a real no-no. Um, okay, uh, this is just another of these cases where I would have just taken two sheets to do this. The material looks really good. Uh, it's got lovely f uh, flowers. Uh, the, the, there's adequate material. This bit's a bit scrunched up, okay? Whereas this other bit is uh, nicely uh, spread out, okay? So you're sort of looking for it. And, and you can see that some of these leaves are bent over, which is not so good, but on the other hand, you want to have some leaves facing up because you can see that they're discolorous and there may well be features. Uh, you know, if you want to be able to look for dementia, you want to have, you, whoops, or, you want to have a leaf, uh, a leaf facing up the other way. Okay, any questions on that? Before? Thank you. Okay, and Sam, uh, okay, so, okay, Sam, Sam forgot his uh, ju uh, jeweler's tags and so decided to use um, masking tape. Can, can I suggest um, you take that off uh, if, if I'm in a situation where I run out of collecting, uh, collecting tags, um, then I will write on the bottom of the sheet, I will write the collector's name and number. But of course, there's a real risk that if you start swapping papers that everything gets confused. So um, I don't recommend that, but in a case like this, that would have been uh, a better, quicker, simpler solution. Um, now, if there's something more to that specimen, uh, it could be redeeming, but on its own, uh, okay, a bit, more effort, a bit more effort to spread that out at the time of pressing. It's good that there are leaves facing up and down. This is a nice example of a eucalypt where, where the leaves are discolorous, so it's really important to be able to see that. Um, but obviously it's sterile and it's not, there might be, yeah, there might be more of it. Uh, well, that's maybe more, but uh, maybe something else, but we want to see fertile material. You can see the problem with that. Okay, um, a climber, um, and yes, yes we could identify it, but it's sterile, so try and avoid that. Uh, 
again, uh, sterile, and not, not perhaps quite enough of the material. <coughs> so I'd, I'd be aiming to have a larger specimen than that one. Oh, uh, another sterile, and um, so there's, there's, but it's better to have done a trial run like this and then go out and go, well, at least, at least Sam's learnt something about the issues of pressing the material. This is a nice example where I would have, in, at the time of, this is sterile, if I bend this now, it's going to snap off. Um, but I would have had one, one the other way, so that when I presented it, I would have had one that uh, one that was facing up the other way and the other is showing, so they're showing the, um, the adaxial surface and that's showing the abaxial surface, the upper and the lower surface. Did you say it was best to do it after a couple of hours? Or straight, uh, straight no, away? no, something like that you can do straight away. Mm -hmm. But after a couple of hours you can inspect to see that you haven't folded edges and that the uh, placement is all good. Still fold it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that at the time. Same with this, I would have folded those back. So, um, you know, maybe with my predecessor, you could have got away with these sterile, sterile specimens, but uh, I'm afraid, afraid that um, you've got, you're, getting, you're, getting the, you're getting the pressing right, okay? Yeah. The pressing is really nice, okay? And here we've got a specimen where if it was fertile, I would have been really happy with that because, you know, you've got that, that's a nice example. With this, I would have got rid of this. I would cut this off here, just not uh, because you want. And in fact, I would have cut that off and, and preserved that lovely tip. But at least you've got a lovely tip here and here. I would have folded that back, and but I would make sure I had fertile material. But very nicely pressed. And. Yay, at least we've got some fertile material. So in something like this, um, it, mind you, it's a bit minimalist. I mean, two fruits. You know, it's not, it's, we're not in the seven, eight, 18th or 19th century. Uh, and, and one of the things is you don't have to make so many collections. So 15 is not a lot. So you can afford to make 20 or 25 or 30. But go all out and, and get those uh, replicates and make sure you've got enough material uh, uh, for, for, for both the specimen and, and, the, um, and the process of uh, identification. Now, any questions on any of that? Any more questions, I should say? No? Okay. So, thank you. Um, so, what... I'm going to do is uh, perhaps uh, just go uh, and take, pack up. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I've got some jewelers tags, a collecting book. Um, I'm, I've got uh, actually a tape measure, which is quite handy. My emergency beacon. Um, I've got a GPS, but I'll use a phone as a GPS. Um, and I need some, maybe some plastic bags, and I need, uh, I need a digger. And when I go into the field, I always make sure I've got a, a first aid kit. Uh, I seem to need them sometimes. But, uh, um, and uh, I'll, I'll usually have several digging implements. Uh, that's one. Always interesting, taking those across international borders. Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll make sure I've got some uh, clippers. You can buy quite cheap, quite good clippers from Coles. Uh, you, won't get, you won't get this. That was a present from my host in Japan. They're, they're used in cutting out weeds in paddy fields. They're really good. But you can find all sorts of other uh, diggers and, and uh, cutters. Um, so what we're going to do, what else do I need? Arm bandage, no. Yeah. Oh, um, they can be really good. So a pair of binoculars. A pair of binoculars can be really, really good if you're looking at um, for features of eucalypts. Um, or, or if you're just trying to spot the, with 
the fruits. Um, so a pair of binoculars can be really useful. Uh, but um, you can also search around, around the ground and also on other plants that are underneath the canopy for windfall. What's the biggest risk when you collect windfall for fruits or for buds or for eucalypt, for example? Or the same in, 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 uh, in terms of fruit that have fallen off an acacia. What's the biggest risk? What, what must you avoid? Exactly. How many places have you seen where there's only one species of eucalypt in, in the canopy? Now, there are cases like that, and that's great, because if there's only one species within uh, a reasonable area, then your chances of getting uh, across a um, mixed collection are very low. Um, but if you go to any of the places we went on, on the one-day field trip, there, were, there was at least... Uh, three and sometimes up to six or seven species of e eucalypts in, in, in the sort of area that you could have been standing in. And so the whole idea of mixing and matching juveniles and mixing and matching windfall of fruits becomes a lot more problematic. But again, that's why I'm asking you to only collect from one or two sites that you can try and have the time to actually understand what's going on at that site. Okay? Um, Okay, so uh, we, we will um, just uh, pack up. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to uh, take a press. Um, uh, one of my field assistants will help me. Um, thank you. Uh, and um, anything else I really need uh, this time around? Yeah? Anything else? <laughs> thank you. I think we've got a cinematographer. <laughs> okay, so uh, so in the bag. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I'll just um, we'll just keep this running and walk uh, across the road. Uh, there are some things that won't work so well. He can, you can just that? latch that, please. Okay. Yeah. Just, just, uh, <laughs> just some angles. Watch out that you don't. Not the <laughs> okay. So you can put the legs up. No, I'm right. I'm right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, Um, so scary. Uh, oh, a couple of questions. Uh, do you want me to go through the process of actually collecting the data for the collecting book? Do you want me to do that? Okay. So, if if you're doing that, and one thing I've for, forgotten, you most of you have forgotten is the hat. Uh, you're but welcome. What? What I want to do is, um, okay, the GPS is working. Uh, I've got a... Um, so that one of the first things I would do is make sure that I can uh, describe uh, the site and the location correctly. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to record this... Uh, properly. The only thing I don't like about this example is that um, is that this isn't going to be the sort of place that you're collecting from. Uh, so, but w we'll see how we can describe this in the same way that you would describe it. So, uh, first thing is I, I need to make sure I get my next number. So, JJB and. Uh, 3206. Now, if you were actively helping me collect, then I, you know, say if Sam was actively helping me, 
and I would put Sam's name down. What I'm not going to do is put, you know, uh, plus, plus class, because it's too tricky. So the date. Um, I'm, I'm going to be anally retentive, of, of course. Uh, so, so the date I'm putting down is 28 MAR 2013. Okay, uh, I'm, the, the name, well, there are several things I can collect here. Uh, there's, uh, there are, there's, there are several grasses, there, there are several other things. This thing here with the, the fuzzy, uh, fruits, what family is that? That's uh, Well, I'll get you to have a look. But there's a cluster of flowers together, surrounded by an involucra of bracts. Um, so, if I know what it is, or if, for example, no one knows what that is, the family? Okay, it's Asteraceae. And so, say you collect that in the field, and you don't know what it is, other than Asteraceae, just write down Asteraceae because it's a good start. Uh, state, New South Wales, Division, NT for Northern Tablelands. Now, these things, if I was collecting the canna, this would be cultivated, so um, this was planted here. So it wouldn't be allowed for your collection. But these other things, these weeds, are, are all naturalised. So, um, I will just to remind. Uh, um, I will put. Garden. Bed. Adjacent. Glass. House. Actually, I should be starting from general to specific. So what do I need to start with? I need to start with um, uh, Armadale, uh, University of New England. Thank you. Um, uh, Trevena, off Trevena Road. And then um, uh, uh, car park. Uh, between uh, uh, botany and zoology. Okay, so that long, I've got a reasonable number of satellites and the lat long is 30, 29, 16.3. And I, I wait, and I'll keep an eye on that because if it's if I don't have a lot of satellites and or if the, that's fluctuating, I then either need to, to set it to an averaging system or I need to wait till it settles down. Um, one five one, thirty eight, one point zero, altitude is one thousand and twenty three, which rings a good bell. I'm circling GPS. The datum is W. GS84 and the waypoint is uh, if I waypoint this uh, which I can on this as well uh, on on my Garmin uh, GPS it will give me a number and so I'll just write that down that's something that's just a temporary handle so I, I know which waypoint to go back to that's not something that goes on to the label the waypoint doesn't go back but waypointing is a good idea. The same is uh, to get a, a picture as well. I'm going to do the aspect. The aspect is basically, even though this is a reasonably level bed, it's actually, because of this building, it's facing that way. And that way is south. So the aspect is south. So, uh, uh, raised bed. Um, and the soil uh, substrate 
is actually I might not fit that there. When you're digging plants up, oh, uh -oh. Uh, you can see that that's a a brown a, a brown um, humic loam sand. Uh, Raised garden bed. <coughs> um, um, brown, humic, loam, sand. Now the vegetation, this is a bit weird. Um, one could simply say that it's a um, a garden, a, a, a garden bed with uh, with what's names uh, with uh, canners. Um, it's actually, if you wanted to use the spec system, uh, you would describe this as a herb field. <laughs> um, so cultivated, cultivated uh, canna herb field. With um, with Asteraceae, Poaceae, and Rumex, the genus. Okay. Uh, what are we collecting? We'll, we've still got to collect something, so I'm going to try and collect the daisy to show you a couple of things. Um, and and in a case like this, I I would say I can see one, two. Because there are a few plants, I can count the number of plants. Uh, can we see more plants than that? So um, if, if it's all through, if it was this grass and there were just hundreds of plants, I would just say common or very common. But with that, I can say uh, uh, two plants. And if I see more, I can adjust that. Two plants at sight. And the description will get a better sense when we uh, So it's a uh, it's an, uh, it looks like an annual, but we can check that annual <coughs> to 170 cm. Uh, I'm going to take a photo, and that photo will be uh, geotagged, which is quite nice as well. And it's important to stay high down on every page. It will serve to act for my memory, okay? And it will help me when I come to, to identification. I can have you in the background, yes. Okay. All right. All right. Now, quickly, uh, I need a tag. So the tag has the same name and number as the specimen. Am I going to make the time limit before you go? Okay, Sam, can you put yes. the press down on the ground okay. and open up the straps, please? So I'm writing JJ Brule, not JJB, but JJ Brule, 3206. And, okay, here's the trick. Um, the trick is not to cut myself. <coughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now, um, I, um, the beauty of this is that if I if I cut this off, I can you can see that I'll see.